tale. Now, let's go to another story on the Garden Post newspaper. Sit that Gainey. Read more on this story. It is found on page three of the Garden Post newspaper. Now, still on the Garden Post newspaper this morning, it says, or it has given a uh, Professor Dorothy Njema, that's the uh, uh, member of the National Election uh, Body, Management Body, ELECAM, the person of the year or the personality of the year. And according to the Garden Post, it says that uh, Madam Dorothy Njema's fight to ensure that FACO is sanitized from fake villages and fake chiefs and his uh, utterances that are square peg to square hole make her the woman or the personality of the week. Now, grab a copy of the Garden Post and read more on that story. Now, we leave the Garden Post newspaper to the Post newspaper this morning. The Post newspaper says that government violates forestry law. It, it sounds a lot legal there. Camvet, of course, is the Cameroon uh, Forestry and Wildlife, or rather, um, Camvet, of course, has to do with the forest there will definitely uh, be getting the full meaning of Camvev, which of course is the agro-industrial company, uh, an agro-industrial company uh, there. Now, you want to read more on the uh, login rights that have been violated, crappy copy of the Post newspaper. Now, still on the Post newspaper, the National Communication Council president has urged masses to increase the commitment to media and information literacy. Read more on that story. It's found on page three of the Post newspaper. And also on the Post newspaper, it says terrorism, inflation, and unemployment is hindering or are hindering Cameroon's economic growth. Well, this is a statement made there by the Cameroon Human Rights Commission. You want to read more? Then grab a copy of the Post newspaper. And let us wrap up a press review this morning with the, uh, that is the Municipal Update newspaper. The Municipal Update newspaper says, in the Northwest region, mayors have been accused of witch hunting staff with opposing political views. Well, those mayors who have been witch hunting staff having Opposing political views uh, should definitely, uh, rather you want to read more of the story, definitely grab a copy of Municipal Update newspaper. Still a Municipal Update newspaper, it says that there is a tale in Fako, tale of father and son being chiefs in different villages. Well, grab a copy of that story and, uh, of course, enjoy Grab a copy of the uh, Municipal Update newspaper and the uh, 35th anniversary of Reverend Father uh, Jervis KB was at the center of uh, 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 discussion, prayers, and worship that was yesterday in the uh, small support cathedral there. And of course, uh, Father JV celebrated his 30, uh, 35th priestly uh, anniversary. and. Bishop Michael celebrates with him as captured there by the uh, Municipal Update newspaper. Now, lastly, on the Municipal Update newspaper, it, on its ear, it says, ways of making society more inclusive for persons with disability. It has some ways where the society can become more inclusive, especially with persons with disability. And of course, that story on the Municipal Update newspaper wraps up our weekend edition of Press Review. Thank you very much for watching, dear viewers. Definitely we'll be together again on Monday for the very last edition of Press Review in the month of October. Keep enjoying Safi Vigilance. Merci beaucoup Yannick Fonky. Voilà ce qui prêche ce matin. Ah, intéressant, je vais commencer. <rire> ce qui est, tu as vu visiblement comment je me suis un peu levée mm -hmm. quand j'ai vu euh, sur l'affaire de, des villages fictifs dans le FACO mm -hmm. et l'histoire d'un père, père et un fils qui sont chefs dans deux, mm -hmm. deux villages différents. Je pense que si c'est évidemment vrai, je pense que c'est 
c'est, moi je vais encore, euh, encore dire euh, courage à l'administration qui a décidé de mettre la main sur cette euh, situation parce que mm -hmm. c'est un peu bizarre d'entendre qu'un père et un fils sont chefs euh, différemment de différents villages. Comment ça se passe Comment ça se passe Comment est-ce qu'on explique ça Well, uh, just it's uh, it's unexplainable, of course, uh, getting that situation because we know that uh, in uh, FACO division, though chieftaincy uh, among the back race is rotatory among the families, uh, not not necessarily inheritory as in the case of the northwest region, but the every other child of a chief is intimate um, aspirant to the throne. And if you hear that a son is <laughs> becoming uh, a chief in another village, it, it sounds quite quite interesting there. But it, it piles up to the number of cases of irregularities happening in faculty division, especially with respect to creation of revive, re, reviving new villages in the division and also the, the um, uh, creation of new chiefs and, uh, and all of that. There's been a lot of irregularities and government ha is probing into it. Well, we cannot emphasize more on the need to sanitize the division. We know one person who has been fronting the uh, advocacy to sanitize for code division is uh, Professor Dorothy Gemma, who has gone through the thick and thin, the biggest offices and the smallest, to ensure that uh, FACO division is sanitized of um, the proliferation of villages and uh, the proliferation of chiefs. So there should be some regularity in this sector. Well, Joyce, that's the situation. We cannot emphasize more, but the senior divisional officer, um, that is uh, Mr. Shaibo, <coughs> is doing quite a lot to ensure that this uh, sanitation or these regularities uh, met. Now, Joyce, let me give you quickly some, some facts and figures here. The okay. senior divisional officer is already talking with chiefs and already 13 uh, village, 15 villages in Limbe. That is Limbe 1, Limbe 2, Limbe, Limbe 3, three. subdivisions <coughs> are, are under review to why, whether the authentic villages and whether the chiefs are authentic chiefs. And we have a series of reasons uh, that have been attributed there. Boya has the bulk. Boya has yeah. 26, uh, 25, I beg your pardon, 25 villages that are under review. The senior wow. divisional officer already met with Limbe and Boya uh, divisional officers together with the chiefs concerned, the 25 villages and the chiefs concerned. <laughs> and yesterday, Thursday, the uh, 27th of October, the senior divisional officer met with the senior, the divisional officer for Tiku, mm -hmm. and the number of villages in Tiku under question are eight, eight villages in Tiku. So these are, I don't know why it is happening the way, but these are all uh, riverine or should say seaside uh, 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 subdivisions. And so the attractive nature of the subdivision is giving rise to the uh, and pressure for some people to really uh, do some malfunctions in order to ascend themselves, ascend certain thrones, and also make gains from the land and all of that joint. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. we are just looking at the fall, uh, the fall back or the throwback of all of these things. Um, mm -hmm. Imagine some villages that have been operating. What happens to those who have already, pu already purchased the land mm -hmm. and all one not? We just pray that amicable or are met once these situations are regularized. Away from that, Yannick, we have the Ballon d'Or of Cameroon, which has resurfaced something which had long been forgotten. Who is going to take the Cameroon Ballon d'Or? Well, I, I should say rather that this is a, a very big innovation from somewhere it was um, magnanimity mm -hmm. because. Uh, the president or uh, the, the, the then president of Fika Food had not really invested quite a lot in glorifying the the, the players, clubs. Remember, Samuel Ito has brought in the Cameroon Super Cup. Mm -hmm. That is, after they play the National Cup, they play the Super Cup to begin the new season. And now we're getting the Cameroon Ballon d'Or, which is a very good thing. And players will have the opportunity now yeah. to get in. Um, to be, uh, how do they call it? To, to be, be recognized, yes, recognized, to be recognized, and to receive some cash trophy. Yeah. Now remember, this and also is gainfully occupy them. Gainfully occupy them. Mm -hmm. Now this is a pull factor. It's not a push factor. Remember, in the days, including Samuel Eto, were pushed out of the country. Mm -hmm. He could have continued plying trade in Cameroon, but the 
because the environment was not conducive. conducive for him to continue. He had to apply it straight abroad. Now, with these innovations and beautiful uh, things that uh, Samuel Eto is doing, it will make now players feeling so contented with your country, playing in their country, and we will have professionals in this country. And mind you, it's going to serve as a magnet. More players will be coming to play in Cameroon. I hear uh, Koton Sport, uh, Canon, uh, Bamboo Tools, and uh, Young Sport Academy brought in new players. New players have come in, and we're even having white coming to play in Cameroon. This is how more players will be coming in, and the, the, the Cameroon Professional League will be more competitive. And mind you, when it is more competitive, more money comes in. Sure. Back in the day, players used to receive as low as 16,000 francs a month of salary. Yeah. But now, it has said no player should go less than 100,000 or 115,000. Sure. So this is a beautiful innovation. That is somebody's profession, and so he should not be doing it as an option. He should do it as a full-time, as an occupation. So sure. it's very important. So this is a beautiful innovation. Beautiful from Samuel innovation. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Samuel Ito, for mm -hmm. bringing mm -hmm. that on board. Mm -hmm. Still on spot, Yannick, uh, Le Jour revisits uh, the, what has not been said about uh, a poupée, if I'm not mistaken. It, it zooms into the 1990 World Cup, uh, mm. Le Jour. Quite interesting. <laughs> I want to revisit some of that. Oh, Mila but, Roger. Uh, <laughs> Mila Roger was very bitter very bitter uh, to Argentina in the 1990 uh, World Cup. Remember, uh, Mila Roger had retired, but uh, President Bobia called him from retirement that go and uh, lead your people, just like uh, God called Moses to go and lead the Israeli from Israel. Right? <laughs> and he did his best. And, and, of course, it is in 1990 that the best of Cameroon's uh, footballers uh, were, were uh, really recognized. Cameroon played the best of his game. Uh, and of course, Italy 1990 would never forget about the famous dance of Mila Roger turning his, <laughs> his uh, buttocks like that after defeating Argentina by two goals to one. I mean, you know, a lot of beautiful scenes and all of that that animated uh, 1990 uh, quite a lot. And so we, we should always have this uh, remembrance, especially the players, so that whenever they are representing Cameroon, they should know that never is never enough until your bones are rotten. rotten. Remember, your bones can never get <laughs> rotten. But until they are rotten, Don't then say never. never you say never. <laughs> and so Cameroon has been taken as the underdog in this uh, 2022. I mean, in just a couple of weeks, this mm -hmm. November, we shall be having the World Cup. Cameroon is the underdog in his group with Switzerland, Brazil, and Serbia. And Cameroon has not performed so well. But Cameroon also came as an underdog in 1994 but they did so well. So we are wishing the players that look back and see how your compatriots gave their all and also try to emulate so that you perform even better and move to the next round. Remember, football is the only thing that unites us here. And I'm telling you that people <laughs> drop their weapons and watch football, and they enjoy football. So yes, yeah, <laughs> it is an opportunity for people to is. unite this country Unadulteratedly, so it sure, should be. Sure, sure. Oh, yes, Football brings refined. a lot of mm -hmm. things, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of things, or a lot of people mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. Now, away from sports, Yannick, we Equatorial still Guinea. Equatorial Guinea. Mm -hmm. We still have uh, uh, the government or the president who is actually making sure that the Cameroonians can return safely back to their country from Equatorial Guinea. That it is not always good to come at this, and it is good to have them back. Mm -hmm. But why not make the place comfortable for them to stay? Well, it's, it's really on and really off, on and off, we always come when once we hear they are stranded here or there, we start up bringing up uh, how to remove. Uh, we already know, we, talk, we elaborated already about the, uh, what it takes to go to Equatorial Guinea and some of the things that, is ha that are happening there. Mm -hmm. I think that the government should, we should try, government, civil society, and the, and the private sector should make sure, should try as much as they can mm -hmm. to make the place conducive such that these young persons or these Cameroonians will not go to other countries as fugitive. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if we have, uh, you know, all of them are looking for better opportunities, mm -hmm. greener pastures, but I also know that we have to rewash our brains mm -hmm. because we think that we can make it better off in other countries mm -hmm. when sometimes, no matter how difficult it is in our own country, I believe we can still make it. Right. If others are making it, then we can make it. We can make. We are also aware, mm -hmm. believe that if we have that positive mindset that we can make it, then we keep pushing for the powers that be to make things comfortable for us to remain. It will, yeah. it will, it's going Ab to absolutely. Help. So it starts with 
diplomatic agreements, diplomatic discussions. The head of state really needs to meet with uh, his counterpart of Equatorial Guinea to see how we are brothers. We are brothers. We need to remember there was an attempted coup in Equatorial Guinea and it was being foiled in Cameroon. It was foiled in Cameroon because they, those who were planning the coup the encroaching to Cameroon and were planning to go back. And so many gendarmes and uh, military officers were arrested in Cameroon and repatriated to Equatorial Guinea. That is the bilateral cooperation that is between Cameroon and Equatorial Guinea. Okay. It is really shameful to see that our citizens are being treated the way they are being treated in Equatorial Guinea. I mean, Joyce, go almost on a monthly basis at uh, the Limbe Centenary Stadium. That is where they come and drop them. When they are repatriated, they come to eat through it now. They are being dropped there. They have been dropped in Douala and other parts of the country, but it's mostly around there. And it is really a painful situation. But again, Joyce, uh, we have to be very, very frank and fair among all of these. Equatorial Guinea is another country, and Cameroonians really need to know. Irrespective of the fact that you can go to Equatorial Guinea with an ID card, you should know that it is another country. It's not your country. There are papers you need to procure before you go to Equatorial Guinea, and it should be respected. Remember that you need to pay your resident permit and other things. Equatorial Guineans are here in this country and they've come for studies. Some of them are in Mutengene uh, doing the police in the police college. We, we train most of their police officers. Sure. So sure. most of them are here and all of them, but they have the right papers. Don't go there and you feel that you can just uh, be comfortable because you can use your ID card and enter there. Get the right papers. Joyce, I tell you, to get your resident permit in Equatorial Guinea, it is 500,000 francs. Wow. That's, that's a lot of money. But it's a small money there if you work because they have a high standard of living, although they have a high cost of living. So if you work there a bit, you can easily make that money to get your resident permit. Uh, unfortunately, many Cameroonians on going there cannot have such an amount of money. That is why many don't procure such documents and they are being repatriated from time to time. And I also tell you that many of them end up being concubines to some of these Equatorial Guineans so that they can hide from the Kali Kali people who are coming there. It's really unfortunate. Please get the right papers and don't attract the wrath of the forces of law and order in Equatorial Guinea. Oh, great. Get the right papers if you must be there. In the meantime, also be contented with what your country can offer and also look forward to making your country a better place like you will wish it to be. And lastly, a story that caught my attention, Dan Polio, victim of xenophobia in <laughs> South Africa. Mm. Well, it's really a painful experience. A painful experience because uh, uh, that is Alaji Dampolo has done quite a lot for South Africa. His, most of his investments are in South Africa. In fact, he has some cooperation agreement with the South African government. And so most of his holidays, instead of spending out of the, country, uh, out of the continent, he stays in South Africa. And of course, South Africa is noted for xenophobia. That is hate against people who are not from your country. That hate is really, really too much. And, well, we don't know the substance of the story, what uh, orchestrated or attracted that, but uh, the bottom line as captured by Dampolo that he was a victim of xenophobia, which, of course, it's a painful experience, having people to insult you, throw you out, and, and all of that. They call us Cameroon Pepe all the time when we go out of the country. That's all they know Cameroon for. And maybe Samuel Etofi, Samila Roje. Uh, those are the, the things they know Cameroon for. But at least we have our Pepe, and we can be proud of our football. <laughs> Don't insult us too much. You know, <laughs> it is really a painful experience. Yeah, thank you, mm. Yannick. We're going to read the details and find out what exactly mm. transpired as far as that is concerned. In the meantime, I invite our viewers so make sure you grab a copy. Do not be satisfied with the little analysis or discussions Yannick and I have on set. The details of the stories are in the paper. So do make sure you grab a copy from the stands and read the details. In the meantime, Yannick, you promise, we promise to dance on set this Friday. So we are inviting the broadcasters to give us a beautiful music, which Yannick is going to tell us which one. <laughs> of course, we're going to have uh, clay. Luckily, by Phil Bill, it's a beautiful piece of music. Baby, don't need more like clay. Baby, don't need more like clay. Because the clay, si la porte ne s'ouvre plus. Baby, don't need more like clay. Quelqu'un a changé la place rue de ses portes. Oh my goodness. Baby, don't need more like clay. We're going to dance it in a visionary way. 
in a very missionary way, we'll have that song. <laughs> Let's have that beautiful music. Absolutely. Just to give you the best of morning, so mm-hmm. I had to give you this. Uh, try, I had to try to dance a little bit, mm-hmm. just for your pleasure. In the meantime, Absolutely. Yannicka, 
We're going to have You're going to have a Kenja man. Kenja man. And there is a second part of the dancing. Absolutely. We have an artist we this have time. I'm going to program. Definitely, he's going to shabasiko us in his own like manner. Of course. No, he's not going to be shaba. He has a. Be- in fact, let's reserve it for. Let's reserve it. For well, the sh- sh- uh, guest. Shabasiko is a general term for beautiful. For beautiful music. music Absolutely. So. <laughs> let's have Kenja man Kenja right, man right, right after, after this break. break. Mm-hmm. To a salute for all Maui, either Camilo stop by for today's Friday, October 27, 20, 28, 2028, 2022, for insights. We here as we talk for sad time, Friday, the so the cultural Friday, the traditional Friday for insight development television. For our entire side, so mutung we will go on, Mr. Seb, and it is our face and get with our match fire of our own. <laughs> All right, my favorite blue to refresh before we see how we dance. If it happened to we can jam inside. Uh, today for sense story, come on, I've side for my 40 for inside Muyoka subdivision. Could you put them and uh, Mr. Angala? Now it's send with sense story. Say this so plenty way a day for corner lantern. You know, they ever get dry leaf, they always get fresh leaf, fresh leaf as we talk so for some time. Mr. Angala, for last of my 40, we the salute to and all my way watch you for that side as we talk. All right, quickly start with the to read them for this money time, coach put them. We the enter for that side for small support for uh, regional parties, cathedral, coach put them. For we set for go see how we ceremonial for 35 years for in priestly wood where now uh, Reverend Father Javis KB, he set set in the clock 35 years for Father Work, coach put them, where they the coin among senior Javis, he be clock 35 years as Father and he become. Back home for can celebrate them um, with Christian poor them with parish na them for inside the house of Baya. Sabi say he says this so neither when I say and so now father for inside the house of Baya. So if he come back home for can celebrate it 35 years as father for inside father work as we the chair when I saw for Sunday. The ceremony it be happened yesterday for that side for regional passing cathedral for small support and even the chief shepherd too for inside the house of Boya. He said, we did it wrong, wrong, as we tell now. So, and coach put them, after the ceremony, we said, we will catch uh, Monsignor Javis, and he will talk for we after our accident, but I say, coach man. This palabra, this so 35 years, maybe 35 days, maybe 35 months. Tell we how far the palabra, it don't be. Who go here? 35 years have not been uh, a bed of roses. There have been ups and downs, but... As I say, I briefed them as the ta- as they ca- as they came. I was ordained here in Sopo uh, for some time. I was working from Fiango, but at the bishop's house. This I be secretary general for National Episcopal Conference for Isai Cameroon as we talk. 